was just yelling at me. So. Okay. What was he yelling at you about? Uh, I thought my sister because I'd broken up the tussle with them earlier. And he told me not to interfere anymore with them or I'd pay. And he came at me with a bat. Subject that's been shot. His last name is going to be Valo, Victor Adam, Lincoln, Lincoln Ocean. First name Charles. No DOB as of right now. He's out of uh, Texas, Houston. July 11th, 2019. That's when a man named Charles Vallow was shot and killed by the man you saw in the video there, Alex Cox. Alex Cox is the brother of Lori Vallow Daybell, the so-called doomsday cult mom. And tonight we are going to show you something that has just been released from uh, the Chandler Police Department out in Arizona. It's the interview with Lori Vallow. I'm saying Lori Vallow because she was married to Charles Vallow at the time. Is before she hooked up with the Doomsday Prophet. Not before she hooked up, before she married the Doomsday Prophet. Perhaps after she hooked up with him, though. That's still, uh, you know, a big issue. Anyhow, she gets interviewed by police. So we have that video now. We're going to take a look at it. And again, remember, this is the day that her husband has just been shot by her brother. Pay attention to her demeanor and everything else that she says. He comes back in, I went to give him his phone, he was screaming at me to give him his phone. He was very worried about whatever was on his text mm -hmm. that he did not want me to see. And so I was just holding it there and he was screaming at me. And I was kind of walking towards around the house with it so he couldn't get it. He's like reaching for it and stuff like that. And so Tylee came out of her room upset mm -hmm. and she had a bat and she told him to leave her mother alone, like, mm -hmm. right? So she was really whatever, and he's screaming at her, don't you hit me with that bad, blah, 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 blah. And then my brother heard all the commotion because he was in there in bed, and so he came out into the main room, and um, I guess whatever. What's your brother's name? Alex. Alex, okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, he just started, he was screaming, and he was super upset, and whatever, and um He's yelling at Tylee, don't you shut me with that bat, and blah, 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 and so Tylee, I guess, I don't know if she swung at him or what, but he, like, grabbed the bat from Tylee and then went to, like, hit Tylee with the bat. It was, and I was right there, and they were right there, and my brother grabbed him from behind, mm -hmm. like, just to stop him from hitting Tylee. You go like this, like, he grabbed him, like... Yeah, from behind, like, uh -huh. just kind of to pull him back, uh -huh. and then, um... They got into the thing, and he's hitting him with the bat, and they're on the ground, like, grappling around or whatever. And then, um, I mean, that was all and he, quickly. And he hit your brother with the bat while they were grappling and stuff? Yeah, I, yes, he was hitting him with the bat, like, swinging the bat, you know, back and forth, and they were kind of, like, on the ground, and I was, like, freaking out, trying to go around. Knowing JJ was in the car, yeah. right, and so... Then he got up and he had the bat like this towards me and I was going around the other side to try to just get out of his range where he couldn't hit me. And then um, I had told Tylee because she was on the ground because after he took the bat from her, she fell back. And so I told her, I was like, go get in the car with JJ. Like, I don't want JJ coming in to the house. Or, mm -hmm. And I wanted her out of the way. I wanted the kids out of the way whatever this fight was going to be. They got up from that and my brother had like stepped back I guess and um, then Charles was coming with me at the back and yelling at me to give him his phone mm -hmm. still because I had it in my hand. It was all really quickly mm -hmm. and then um, when I went around kind of in the circle then my brother was there. Yeah and then I was kind of turned around and we were all right there in that room, except for the kids had been outside by that time, and I heard the gunshot. Mm -hmm. And so you heard the shot. Mm -hmm. Did did you actually see see the shot, or did you just hear it? I had gone around. Mm -hmm. to the kitchen to get away from him and so back around so I don't know if you went in the house I didn't so I'm like so, a little bit of a disadvantage yeah so I didn't see when I didn't see the shot I heard it and then I came back around and I saw that he was on the ground okay. and I was freaking out yeah. and so I was just freaking out and it just went into mama and I'm like I've got to go to get JJ to school I've got to get to the kids I just felt like i got to get to the kids 
I don't know what to make of that. Um, let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter uh, with us tonight. This is uh, unbelievable. I mean, I didn't know this existed, this video, and now it's been released. Um, what was going on in the relationship at that point? What was going on in, in, in Lori Vallow at that point, right? What was going on in, in, in her world and in this relationship? Vinny, huge revelations in this investigative file from the Arizona Police Department. We have thousands of police reports, body cams, audio and video interviews to sift through. But it's bringing more to light about what the relationship was like between Lori Vallow and her estranged husband, Charles Vallow, in the months and weeks leading up to his murder, alleged murder here. And at one point during that interview with the detective, Lori, now this is just hours after her husband was shot by her brother in alleged self-defense. She describes Charles and what the relationship was like. Let's listen. It's all these threats on my phone all the time, you know, like whatever, all these things. And then he told me what kind of threats? Just uh, you'd have to read them to know, but he's always mad at me, right? Okay. And he doesn't want a divorce, but I don't like him and don't want to deal with him, so that's just how it is. So, yeah. so we married for 14 years, we dealt with him for 14 years, and him being horrible to her. Like, he gets in huge fights with her, he, yeah, a lot of things, but okay. anyway. Did you catch a little giggle here and there? It's consistent throughout her interview with police hours after her husband was just murdered, allegedly. Uh, but she talks about Charles threatening her, that he has a temper, that he goes nuts. And this really aligns, Vinny, with what Lori says, that she was in fear that morning. That's why she had her brother Alex Cox stay the night with her to be there to protect her. But if you look a little bit further back in this case file that was released yesterday, there's some more insights. Uh, if you go back to June of 2019, leading up to this, we're learning that was a turning point for Charles Vallow. In fact, he learned that Lori was allegedly having an affair. Here's what the police report says. It says on June 29, 2019, Charles Vallow sent Chad Daybell an email informing him that he was aware Lori had sent an email asking him to come to Arizona to ghostwrite a book that he was working on. Charles told Chad that he was not working on a book and that he and Lori needed to explain what was going on or he was to expose them. Charles also mentioned that he was aware Lori had sent him dance videos of her and that was not appropriate. Now, Charles continued to send Lori text messages informing her that he was aware of her affair and that he had, had obtained Tammy Daybell's email address and cell number, and he was going to tell Tammy Daybell. Well, he did just that, Vinny, on June 29th, same day. Charles sent an email to Tammy Daybell, and that email says, Tammy, my name is Charles Vallow. I have some vital and disturbing information regarding your husband and my wife, Lori. This is your work email, so I'll wait to send you the quote evidence that is very disturbing. You may call or email me from the address where you can receive the information. I apologize to be the one sending this, but something has to be done. I feel it's best if I shed some light on the quote issue regards Charles Vallow. So no indication, Vinny, in this file, if Tammy Daybell received this email from Charles Vallow in June, June 29th, or if, you know, it doesn't explicitly say, our spouses are having an affair with each other, but it's very enlightening as to what Lori knew, what Chad knew, what Charles knew, and when they knew it. And again, Charles Vallow murdered July 11th, just several weeks after this email was sent to Tammy Daybell. Yeah, and any spouse that gets an email like that is going to put two and two together very quickly, very quickly. Wow, this is explosive stuff. This is, uh, I mean, this is revealing a whole nother level and, and I think really puts this whole case into another context. I want to bring in the think tank, um, Carmen Rose, Sue Ann Robinson with me. Um, Sue Ann, as much as this was supposed to be about religion, as much as this was supposed to be about uh, the end of times and all this other stuff, this is just, you break it down, and, and I suspected this, but this to me really confirms it. This is just about an affair. It's about sex. And that's it. That's it. Let's kill people. Let's get them out of the way so we can be together and sleep together. Chad and Lori, getting people out of the way so they can be together. To me, it, it is so much clearer after getting this information. 
Absolutely. And it's also about horrible, horrible parenting. Because you have to remember, while all of this is going on, the kids are there. What is it that her daughter is coming out with a bat? Like, what is she mirroring or, or has she been taught that that's her way to respond to a social situation? And then remember, after all of this, she gets in the car and takes her son to Burger King and then school. That's her response after her husband is shot. So clearly she's currently in the place she needs to be getting mental health treatment because none of her responses to any of this are appropriate or normal. Yeah, uh, Carmen, when I first started covering this story and, and you know, you're getting bits and pieces of information, uh, initially I thought it was maybe some sort of a cult or something, and it's not. It's about two people who got the hots for each other, but they're married to other people, so they gotta get them out of the way. And they're not gonna do it through divorce, uh, perhaps because of monetary reasons. Seen, I've seen that many, many times. Perhaps for Chad Daybell, doesn't want to divorce Tammy because that would be uh, maybe uh, seen as some, somehow disgracing the family. So it's, it's easier and cleaner uh, that she just dies of natural causes, right, in the middle of the night. I mean, this is about sex. She's sending Chad dancing videos of herself. Carmen? Benny, you're right. The story's as old as time. And the other part of the story, which has also been heard many times, is we have a woman who selfishly wants to have her husband, who was going to rent her a home that she was still taking advantage of and getting gifts and things from to take care of the kids and to be part of her life. Meanwhile, she's with this other guy having sex with him and not being a completely honest about the relationship she's having with either one. And I think going to her selfishness is her response during this video. I mean, her husband- Oh wait, hold on a second, she's crying. She's getting emotional, hold on a second. <laughs> well, that's after the interview's over where we hear her doing nothing but laughing. So, you know, and maybe that's nervous energy, but remember, you know, she just saw her husband dead. She has been present during this altercation. Her brother could go to prison for the rest of his life. Her husband's dead. She's got the two kids to deal with. And again, as my colleague said, she runs off to Burger King and takes the kids to school like it's a regular day. I mean, how can you believe this wasn't set up? And then, of course, there's no such thing as coincidence this happening just two weeks after he's confronting everyone and saying, look, this affair will not go on the way that you two think it will from here on out unless something changes. And it didn't. All right, we've got more to get to on this story. Still ahead. On the docket tonight in Chandler, Arizona, new video released of doomsday cult mom Lori Vallow Daybell and her daughter Tylee being interviewed by police after Lori's brother, Alex, shot and killed Lori's husband, Charles. Plus, your reaction to the newly released video of Lori Daybell and her daughter Tylee. Go to our Twitter and Facebook feeds and tell us what you think. This morning, Charles showed up, and I don't know what started it. And Charles is your brother-in-law. Her and he and Lori are married. Yes. Okay. So he showed up. Um, he was um, following her and yelling, um, and then I got between them. And then Tylee came out with her bat. And they had, I had separated for a minute, and then my sister walked around me there in the living room. And then Charles was following Lori and yelling, and Tylee told her to get, told him to get back. She took her bat like that and shoved him, and he took the bat away. And I said, what are you doing? And I got between them, and then he hit me. And I just went down, and when I got up, he was still yelling. And uh, so I went into the bedroom where I was staying, he grabbed my gun, and I came back. Okay. And uh, told him to put the gun down, or the bat down. And he came to me and was saying, you're gonna, what are you gonna do? Like that, come to me with the bat. I said, put it down, he wouldn't, he came at me, so. That is Alex Cox describing the scene as he shot and killed his brother-in-law, Charles Vallow, Lori 
Valo Daybell's husband. Unbelievable, all this stuff uh, being uh, released by police. Um, we also heard for the first time, really, uh, we, we've heard her in bits and pieces and blurred out video before, but really hearing uh, from Tylee, uh, Lori's daughter, for the first time. And here she is describing that whole scene that Alex Cox just described. But as you watch her, remember, she's going to end up dead, buried in her mom's new husband's backyard, okay? Keep that in mind as you listen. So I woke up probably around like 7.50, I want to say, because I heard yelling from like right outside my door. And I don't even know where, but I immediately like jumped up and I have a baseball bat because when I was living at my uncle's, by myself, I just wanted something to, like, mm -hmm. feel safer, and I'm not old enough to get, like, pepper spray or anything, so I was like, okay, I'll get a baseball bat. Yeah, I immediately just jumped up, and I grabbed my baseball bat, and I opened the door, and it was my stepdad, you know, outside the doorway, and then my uncle kind of in the doorway, and then I could hear my mom behind him, and he was just screaming at both of them, like... I don't even know what he was saying because honestly I was just too like like wired I guess mm -hmm. so I told him to take a few steps back I was like you're too close you need to step back and he was like don't tell me what to do and I just kind of just stood there and then my uncle kind of moved out of the way and then my mom kind of went past him and into like the big room okay where everything happened, and so I walked with them, and then I... So they were more in the hallway. Yeah, they were at, like, the end of the hallway, okay. basically. And so my mom walked all the way around, and he kind of followed them, and I just kind of stood. My uncle was, like, right here, and then my stepdad right here, and then me and my mom were kind of right here. And I didn't do anything with the baseball bat. I kind of just held it there, and he was getting really close to my mom, so I kind of stuck it out, like, between them. And they were both just yelling, and he was like, if you hit me with that baseball bat, you're going to go to jail. And I just kind of stood there with the baseball bat, and I just, I didn't really say anything. And so I just kind of stuck the baseball bat out there, and then he, like, he just grabbed it and tried to take it. So I held on to the end, and then eventually I fell, and he kind of took it into his hands like he was going to do something with it. And that's when... So when you fell, he ended up with the bat? Yeah. Okay. And so I fell to the ground, and then my uncle kind of, like, I saw him take a step back, so I'm, my uncle, I think, grabbed him and kind of took him back so he couldn't, like, do anything. You saw your stepdad, so like, take a step back? Take a step back, because he was really close okay. to begin with, and then I kind of, and so my mom said to go with JJ, and so I ran out the door, and then I kind of just stood there with my little brother just he was in the front seat of the car and so I just kind of opened the door and just stood there and like he was trying to get out and I was like no we have to stay we have to stay in and I was like oh like do you I was well I told him like do you want to go in the jeep and then he was like no and then I realized that my car was blocked in so I couldn't anyways I was like okay like just stay here and then eventually my mom came out mm -hmm. and then we left from there. Uh, let's bring back in Core TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter. Uh, Chanley, really first time we're hearing at length from Tylee. And, I mean, this is a very traumatic situation that she's just been through, yet you, you take a look at her demeanor. It, it, it's, it's, it's extremely calm. It is very matter of fact. She's articulate. She's only 16 years old. And how heartbreaking it is to sit here and watch her Vinny, like you said, knowing in just a couple of months from this interview, her uncle Alex is allegedly the one who murders her, and she speaks so fondly of him during this interview, really defends him, and it's just so enlightening on so many levels. And this video is before the interview started, so she's in the room sitting there by herself waiting for the detective to come in, and she really sort of breaks down for a little bit and it's almost as if she composes herself and she's calm. You can tell she's a little bit shaken in the interview, Vinny, but she's collected with the interviewer and uh, really able to describe an understandable story. And what do we know about her relationship with Charles? Because Charles is her stepfather, not her biological father. 
Right, and had been her stepfather for about 14 years, Vinny, and basically she grew up with Charles Vallow, but it was surprising how she described Charles Vallow over the years, and it was a, a narrative supported by Lori's interview as well, who's being interviewed in the same building room next door to Tylee during this time, and they both talk about how Charles basically didn't like Tylee. They didn't get along at all, uh, had even been physical towards Tylee in the past, but here is how Tylee described her stepdad. Is there a reason you put the bat up? Yeah, he was walking towards my mom and I just didn't want him to do anything, so I kind of just stuck out the bat. Like, my mom was right beside me and he was right there, so it wasn't like between them. Okay. It was kind of just like, I just stuck it out to be like, keep your distance, kind mm -hmm. of. When you say you didn't want him to do anything, what did you think he was going to do? Hit her. Okay. Yeah, it's, for the most part, been pretty, like, mundane, but there have been a few, like, violent times with him when I was really scared that he was going to hit me or hit my mom, like, okay. just because everything was kind of crazy. Me and him have always kind of not gotten along. Mm hmm like just since I was little. And so there have been a few times that we've gotten in fights and stuff like that. And so I don't, yeah. So I'm just kind of always scared of that. Vinny, this is really the first time I've heard this following this case. We've heard Melanie Gibb talk about how she didn't really get along with Tylee, but to, to hear Charles Vallow and how he allegedly treated her is disheartening. But at the same time, we have to remember that the prosecutors say this was all a ruse, that he was lured to this house. There was uh, no baseball bat, and he wasn't, um, there wasn't this argument that he was murdered that day. So it, it leaves a lot of unanswered questions as to how much Tylee was actually fed to say or this was her recollection. We just may not ever know. Yeah, let's bring back to the think tank. Carmen Rowe, uh, the other part of this is um, she's a witness to what happened here, to a shooting and the killing of a human being, and then the witness herself disappears and is found dead. Vinny, this story is confusing on a level because it just, it baffles the mind to think that this many people who were involved are no longer with us, including this young lady. And it's just tragic. I mean, you, you listen to her and whether she's a witness, whether she made this whole story up, I mean, I believe what she's saying about the fact that she kept a baseball bat in her room because she was in fear in the place where she lived and slept every night. I mean, I just think that's tragic. And as you said, two months from now, you know, she's going to be in the ground. I mean, it's just the whole thing is unbelievable. But one of the things that we heard in Lori's interview, if I'm not mistaken, is that a lot of people supposedly didn't even know Charles was coming by that day. So, you know, there is a lot that does not make sense and a lot of the demeanor of both this young lady as well as Lori that just does not make sense with what we know occurred inside that house. Sue Ann, are you, are you surprised after these interviews that there were no immediate charges? Absolutely. I mean, Shonda Rhimes couldn't write a better tragedy. There's zombies, there's affairs, there's a nasty divorce, there's multiple murders. I mean, even just based off of the demeanor, the detective, obviously, you know, they're trained in interrogation. And it's like they, they should have gotten something from that interview. They should have picked up on something. And especially with Tylee being a minor and giving that resuscitation of facts and, and the story. And my understanding is that Child Protective Services had been called multiple times previously by Charles Vallow, and this was his supposed attempt at an intervention. So there's just so much to the story here and so much to unfold and so much to unpack. And again, I really feel like she is where she needs to be right now. And I'm just hoping that she's getting the help that she needs so that at some point she can face accountability on all that she's done. Absolutely. All right. Our think tank stays with us. A uh, big thank you to Chanley Painter tonight. When we come back, we hear from you, the 13th juror, your reaction to these videos. Don't go away. You thought it was possible that he was going to hurt you? Absolutely, he was going to hurt me and Tylee. Okay. Not JJ, he would never hurt JJ. Okay. And he hurt my brother. Like, yeah. He, he was going, like, ballistic about 
It was bad. Okay. My stepdad was like, he didn't, he was like, I don't even know how to explain it. He honestly just looked like kind of a crazy person. Okay. Like, screaming and like his face was beat red he just looked like really mad i remember when he took the bat for me i saw his face for like a split second and i honestly like it didn't even look like him he just looked like pure like rage uh -huh. like he was just seeing red so i haven't really seen him like all the way like that before that's like the craziest i've ever seen him all right, Lori Vallow Daybell and her daughter Tylee. Um, this is after the shooting death of Charles Vallow. Posted on social media uh, asking for your reaction to it. We begin with our 13th juror comment of the day coming from Teresa, who says Tylee was murdered for what she knew. Notice how she had to ponder her answer at the end. When did she get to her mother's purse? Was Lori inside the house or not? She wanted to make sure she answered correctly. Sad situation, if only she could have seen the future. Sue Ann, you think there's a chance here that somehow uh, this young Tally was convinced to go along with the story? Yes, certainly. There's, there's a part of her um, cadence and when she's speaking and even in her preparation where it seems like she's preparing herself to deliver a speech or deliver a performance. It's not like a, it's not a natural flow to some of the things that she's saying. And then again, as the 13th juror pointed out, when it starts, when the detective starts to hammer in on the details, you can see her kind of looking up and kind of trying to look for the answers as opposed to knowing them. If she's a witness to these things, she should be able to recall the details easily. And I really, really believe in this case, the devil is absolutely going to be in the minutia of this case. When it really, when we really start to peel back the elements of the different relationships, we are definitely going to find the culprits. And Judy tonight, protecting mom at all costs. So sad Lori didn't protect her own children. Every time Lori enters into people's lives, they end up dead, including her own children. Carmen, we have about 10 seconds. Um, it all, everything always comes back to Lori Vallow. Everyone around her seems to be falling apart. I mean, there's nothing but bad actors here. And this young lady is one of the most innocent individuals we've seen in the whole story. So it's very sad. Absolutely. Uh, Carmen Rose, Sue Ann Robinson, thank you both so much. Great to have you uh, with us tonight. We'll see you again really soon.